So there's a star behind me, and it's a star that most of us are actually quite familiar with. It's Polaris, the North Star. The star that many of us, when we're younger, are taught to use as a kind of a guide, because it always points directly at the North, no matter where you locate it on planet Earth. Which becomes really apparent if you take a time lapse, staring at the star for many hours. It's right there, right in the middle. And since it's also one of the brightest stars in the constellation of Orsa Minor, or the Little Bear constellation, for many centuries and possibly millennia, it's basically been used in navigation across various cultures. But even though we call it the North Star, in reality this is actually a triple star system. A star containing three separate objects, with very intriguing parameters, and also representing a type of a star system that's extremely important for modern cosmology. A star known as the Cepheid Variable, a typical pulsating star whose pulsations are directly dependent on its brightness, and also on its total mass. Basically, this is one of the best ways we can measure distances to quite a lot of different galaxies out there, making this one of the most important types of stars. This is, by the way, the pulsation of Polaris as it changes its brightness just like a typical Cepheid variable. But extremely recently, scientists discovered something nobody expected. There seem to be unusual changes in its fluctuations, and it seems to have been doing it for at least 200 years. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And so today we're going to discuss this relatively recent paper and some of the recent observations in regards to unusual pulsations of Polaris and how this might affect our understanding of the entire universe as well. But I guess let's start with the basics. So what type of a star or what type of stars are these? And what exactly is happening here? The main star here is what's known as Polaris AA. It's essentially a yellow supergiant or an F-type star that's around five and a half solar masses. And that's the star that's producing these pulsating observations. It also has a very close F6 partner known as Polaris AB with a mass of just a little bit larger than the Sun. Here's roughly what the orbit of these two stars looks like. And the orbit here is relatively slow. It takes almost 30 years, with the eccentricity of about 0.63. But as a much, much larger distance, they have another partner. The partner known as Polaris B. A star that's also very similar to our Sun, approximately 1.4 solar masses, but that orbits much, much farther away, approximately 2400 astronomical units with the orbital period being very close to about 40,000 years. And in terms of the distance to Polaris, it's approximately 448 light years away from planet Earth, so definitely relatively far. But because F-type stars are usually relatively bright, and because there are three of them in the system, it makes this one of the brightest stars in the night skies in this particular constellation. But as I mentioned before, the main star is also a classic Cepheid variable. A very important type of a star that pulsates with extreme regularity, forming luminosity curves that look something like this. In this case, a period is about 4 days long. So every 4 days it goes between super bright, super dark, super bright, super dark. With all this variation being the result of changing diameter and the temperature of the star. And what's interesting about Cepheid variables or these pulsating stars is that this unusual pulsation is directly connected to their total brightness. And because of this, by looking at various Cepheid variables really far away, you can actually usually tell exactly how far away they are, because you can find out their total luminosity by looking at the stars like Polaris right here. Which is exactly what was recently done by looking at approximately 300 such stars using the James Webb Space Telescope in order to try to confirm the distances to various distant galaxies. Or to be more exact, in order to actually see if what's known as the Hubble tension, the strange observations in regards to the expansion of the universe, would still be a problem if this data is reanalyzed with James Webb Space Telescope. And well, spoiler alert, the data from the James Webb determined that Hubble tension is really there. The universe seems to be expanding at different rates depending on where exactly you look. You can learn a little bit more about this unusual concept in one of the videos in the description. But the thing is, the recent observations from Polaris do make things a little bit more complicated. 
Once again, this is a classic Safit variable. And turns out that it's actually changed its pulsations over time. Something that right now is somewhat difficult to explain. But first of all, because this is such a well-known star, astronomers have actually been collecting data about the star for nearly 200 years. And the nature of Polaris as a pulsating star was originally established back in 1911. But what's interesting is that most of the observations from the 20th century seem to suggest that the period has been slowly increasing over time. But the total amplitude of pulsations has been declining, with the data suggesting that it increased by about 4.5 seconds every single year. Except for the years of 1963 to 1965, where it seems to have reversed. Nobody knows why. But basically, for the past 100-something years, the pulsations have been increasing, even though the actual increase was not super dramatic. And though it's obviously not certain why this is happening, the only explanation we do have is just in regards to the system being a triple star system. Maybe one of the stars is influencing the main star and is causing it to pulsate at slightly different periods with a lot less amplitude. Although honestly, this is just a guess, there is really no good explanation just yet. But what's even more intriguing are the recent observations from just the last few years. Even though for 150 years the period has been getting longer, something started to change sometime around 2010. In essence, decreasing the pulsation period instead of increasing it. And what's even stranger that back in the 1990s, the overall amplitude of change became so small that it even appeared that the pulsations might stop completely. And the most recent observations suggest that the amplitude is no longer increasing and seems to be coming down. In this case, all of this was measured by using what's known as radial velocity, by focusing on the minute changes in redshift and blue shift, which indicates the total velocity of the star. And in this case, they had quite a lot of these measurements, almost 4,000, going back approximately 60 years. And so right now it's not clear what's happening here, but it's most likely due to the orbital changes. For example, the closest star that orbits every 29 years is most likely disturbing some of the upper layers of the main star, changing the pulsations just a little bit. And because the orbit here is relatively eccentric, we actually do expect large changes, especially when the stars approach one another much, much closer. This happens every 29 years. And so the influence of partner stars is the only explanation we currently have for what could be happening here and why this classical Safed variable is changing its pulsating period. Interestingly, in this case, it also became possible to create a much more accurate orbit of the entire star system. But because of this discovery, it of course also presents a problem. As I mentioned before, Safed variables are often used to determine exact distances. Now, if other Safed variables are also affected by their partner stars, and even to a much larger extent, it's something that we have to be aware of because it could be actually skewing the overall distance measurements when it comes to various distant galaxies. In other words, this is a phenomenon that should be studied a little bit more in order to understand exactly what's happening here and if maybe this is the reason why there is a certain issue when it comes to measuring distances and when it comes to the expansion of the universe. So-called Hubble tension. So definitely some really exciting discoveries from the iconic star Polaris. It seems to be going through some changes, but why, nobody actually knows. Anyway, on that note, we'll definitely come back and discuss this more once there are more details, but until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.